People call me all the time looking to buy properties to be used for short-term rentals. It sounds like a great idea, right? To have a place in Florida that you use for your own vacation, but then it's also earning you money the rest of the year. If you're thinking about getting into the short-term rental business, you're not alone. Tons of people are doing it and the market's growing every year, but it's not as easy as it sounds. Hey, my name is Amy Smith. I'm a realtor here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm here to talk to you about the difficulties of finding and buying a property to be used as a short-term rental. There are a number of restrictions in place that make it a little more complicated than most people think. It really requires a good deal of research. First of all, in Florida, in order to rent a property or even advertise to rent a property for a term of less than 30 days, more than three times per year, you have to have a license, a short-term rental license that you get through the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. Of course, you have to follow their rules about a rental business. It's not a tremendously difficult process, but I'll put that link below. Plus, there are many counties and specific communities across Florida that don't allow any short-term rentals for less than 30 days at all. Even more specifically, some popular beachy areas like around Tampa, for example, have even more restrictions like no short-term rentals for less than 90 or even 180 days. And then there are HOA and condo boards. They often have even tighter restrictions. Uh, for example, many don't allow short-term rentals at all. They, at all, a lot of them don't. Um, or they could have a minimum lease period of one or even two years. They could have a limit on the number of units or homes even that can be rented at the same time. For example, they may say no more than 10% of the homes can be leased at any given time. So then if you're the owner who wants to have your property for lease and there are already 10% rented, you might have to get on a wait list. Obviously, the most important thing here is if you are interested for in a property to be used as a short-term rental, you have to do some investigating, and that's where a real estate agent who really knows what they're doing is, is important. Unfortunately, it's really common for properties to be listed either erroneously or at least unclearly. I get a lot of calls with people saying, hey, this property says there are no rental restrictions, but with a little bit of digging and a quick phone call to the HOA or uh, looking at a zoning map, you can find out that it's not allowed. Obviously, it's important to be aware of the restrictions uh, and do all that way before you make a purchase. Even though there are a lot of areas that restrict the kind of properties I've been telling you about that are leased for less than 30 days, there are a lot of properties that can be leased for 30 days or more. So a lot of investors decide to go that route. There is a market in Florida for rentals of a month or more because Florida has a lot of seasonal visitors. Um, it can be a good way for people to kind of break into the business. So again, the bottom line is do very careful research about where, about what's allowed, finding a real estate agent you really trust. If you have some specific questions about short-term rentals or anything else about living in Florida, don't hesitate to reach out. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.